Hello, hello everyone. My name is uh, Mirko Sottile. Uh, I work for Oracle Consulting, Center of Excellence team in uh, EMEA. Uh, in the last six years, I have been uh, supporting customers in their journey to uh, OTM end-to-end -end implementation. Um, I started uh, with a, a project that was for parcel management. It was a POC in France. Uh, long but nice days in Paris. Then I worked in other industries such as automotive or uh, aerospace and defense. But actually, coming back to, uh, to boxes, basically, uh, has been really interesting because, I mean, I don't receive uh, airplane or helicopters at home on a daily basis, but all of us receive boxes and we go to store almost on a daily basis. So I hope it's going to be interesting also for you to understand uh, some of the background processes that will uh, allow those boxes to be delivered at our own place or either to the store. So uh, for today I'm going to refer just to a, a generic customer. Uh, the scope of this OTM implementation includes the secondary outbound flow from different di uh, distribution centers in Europe to uh, more than 5,000 stores and uh, e-commerce ca e customers uh, all around the world. So, uh, why our client decided to implement OTM? Uh, to stop using massively uh, Excel files and Outlook calendars. Sometimes it looks like it's our main competitor out there. <laughs> uh, uh, to um, achieve uh, uh, equipment uh, um, optimization in terms of uh, increasing the utilization and also in terms of uh, carrier selection thanks to OTM planning, of course, um, to obtain a strong and uh, scalable collaboration platform where different roles can actually collaborate uh, to make uh, all the process um, uh, work. We will see how many roles are currently working with, uh, with our solution. And, of course, to uh, having integrated KPI and hand-to-hand uh, -end visibility for uh, the customer service roles, mainly. So uh, let's dive into the process because it uh, helps uh, to understand the value uh, we are bringing to the to the customer. So uh, there are multiple distribution centers. Uh, in this case, we can see an example for Italy, uh, where we have retail and e-commerce goods that are picked up from the distribution center and uh, de delivered by transportation service pro uh, provider to uh, 3PL's hub, where goods are then deconsolidated till final destination. So the objective for our customer was to um, manage the optimization of the volumes coming from the DC to the 3PL cross docks, um, and then to have visibility on the final leg of, tra of, of transportation to stores and e-commerce customers. Of course, we are not just talking about uh, um, direct uh, road transportation because as we said we have customers all over the world so we are talking also about uh, ocean and air um, uh, carrier selection and op optimization in terms of uh, equipment uh, selection. Okay, to support such scenario you need a really strong uh, collaboration platform. First of all, we have planners. 
which considering the volumes departing from all the different DC, uh, they basically deal with transportation optimization in terms of carrier selection, mode selection, and also volume consolidation. They also manage booking with transportation service provider and keep track of milestone execution. Of course, planners need to collaborate with warehouse and 3PS, which needs to know the volume forecast on a daily basis in order to uh, prepare their operation. In fact, we have also the warehouse role that's using OTM to manage some pre-booking functionality to allow 3PL visibility. All these services need to be paid, of course, so the financial role in, in OTM uh, will make sure that um, they are going to pay the right amount uh, considering what they have contractually agreed with both transportation service pro uh, provider and 3PL managing the local distribution. Um, last but not least, there is the customer service office. So increasing the visibility uh, for uh, stores has been uh, the one of the main ob ob objectives since the beginning. In fact, we will see how we are managing track and trace uh, with the events received by 3PLs and also claims management along with the delivery activity managed at store that's also integrated in OTM. So let's see what we have done in OTM to support all of this and I'd start with the planning decision and carrier selection. Okay, so uh, volume estimation, planning, decision, and carrier selection. It involves the planners and the warehouse in terms of role. So as a retailer, our client deals with thousands of store and e-commerce deliveries uh, that are integrated from SAP as uh, forecast order releases. So these come initially as uh, uh, forecast orders with just volume, weight, and um, high level inf in information. So you can imagine that the target is to uh, plan international transportation starting from the distribution center to the 3PL cross docks. And at the beginning, we just have thousands of order release with the uh, header information with weight and volume. So this was the first main challenge, how to deal with the OTM planning, um, considering such amount of um, order releases with header information. So at the end, we came up with a solution which uh, allowed to consolidate uh, these uh, order releases based on um, the 3PL cross dock, and we generate new consolidated order release in OTM, uh, which basically are the um, estimates that OTM is doing, um, considering all the volumes that should come from a distribution center to a, spe a specific 3PL. So basically, we start with 1,000 order releases, and we hands with the uh, like uh, mm, less than uh, um, 100 order releases considering uh, consolidated volumes that can be planned and uh, can be used to optimize transportation. Let me try to explain better with one example, okay? So on the, uh, on the left, uh, on the top left, uh, you can see that we have 500 order releases uh, with header information with volume and weight and all of these are 
basically you can see those are, as uh, goods to be moved by, uh, from a distribution center to a certain store or e-commerce customer. So 500 um, order releases. What we do in OTM, we basically estimate the number of boxes per each order, order releases consider some inputs given by the warehouse. So with simple uh, cal calculation, we just estimate for each order the number of estimated boxes. So in this case, we have 500, um, 500 orders and then 500 ship unit. At the beginning, we have a one-to-one -one re relation, which uh, means uh, about uh, 260 boxes to be shipped. So we take all these order releases and we create a new order release by integration and workflow, uh, which basically represents the consolidation of 500 order, order releases. And with some calculation, again, with workflow, um, basically OTM is going to estimate that these 500 order releases will be consolidated by the warehouse in 11 standard pallet considering uh, 260 boxes. So we started with 500 forecast order releases and we end with one consolidated order release that's going to be used by planner for planning op optimization. So once we have gen generated with batch process uh, all the master orders, so all the consolidated amount of order releases that can be considered by planners, that how, that's how the uh, planner's uh, workbench looks like. So uh, basically we have now a certain number of pallet and, uh, and boxes that needs to be moved from a certain source to a certain destination. Uh, basically from a warehouse to a 3PL crossdocks or 3PL hub. Our client is uh, leveraging a lot the ground schedule functionality um, be be because we have planners in different offices around Europe and they are doing planning in different stages. So for example, we have a warehouse uh, optimizing their volumes the night before and then we have the day after other planners trying to op op optimize truck that have already departed. So we do have optimization of, of, of trucks that are doing th that are performed in different time frame. That's why we are using ground schedule so basically we might have uh, a truck departing from a certain location in, in Europe, going to Spain or France, that's going to depart uh, basically today. And tomorrow we have a planner that's going to consider residual capacity of that truck to further optimize uh, that, that truck. Um, we can see also at shipment ship unit level, uh, that basically the warehouse is able to update the actual quantities of uh, boxes and pallet uh, through integration. Of, uh, of course, not only ground schedules have been used, but if there is a ground schedule that's uh, with residual capacity, first of all, OTM will consider that residual capacity and then, in case, we'll create new shipments. OK, so once shipment have been generated with, uh, with uh, uh, planning, the booking activity needs to be performed. Um, and we have uh, different roles. So for example, the transportation service provider who is managing the transportation from the distribution center to the 3PL crossdock. And we have also the 3PLs 
which needs some visibility, early visibility, on volumes they need to manage. So uh, we have started with the standard service provider role in OTM to give visibility to the transportation service pr uh, provider. In this example, you can, s you can see that we have um, a shipment from a distribution center to basically two 3PLs hub, A and B, and in the, um, uh, in the um, bottom left, you can see that the 3PL A has got a different visibility just on its uh, volumes that are going to be delivered uh, basically at their hub. So we have developed these uh, additional roles, of course, uh, by leveraging some uh, security functionality in, uh, in, in OTM, allowing for uh, different possibilities for, 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 for booking and also different bo booking categories. So we have, for example, the pre-staging that's performed just with the hypothetical volume. We have the pre-booking that's performed with the forecast volume. And we have the final booking. That's the final confirmation with actual volume. Um, so, of course, the same inf information, especially when talking about actuals, are going to be used by OTM to calculate the cost. So this is a first level of alignment with a different party when talking about uh, settlement. Okay, we have talked about uh, actual in in integration. This is just a um, quick, uh, quick reference. Uh, so um, we are leveraging shipment ship unit to receive actuals from SAP uh, with boxes. So we have seen that at the beginning we have just the forecast orders with just volume and weight. So we consolidate those order into master order with those master order, we create shipment ship unit, and then we use those shipment sh uh, ship unit reference IDs to receive actuals from NCP. And so once we, we receive actuals, we have our uh, handling unit in OTM. We have the boxes in OTM with the firm quantities, actual quantities. And uh, SAP was able to send actuals just for the first leg. So in this case, we can see that we have multiple legs, and S SAP was able to send actors just for the first one. What we are doing, again, with uh, uh, some workflow, some magic, uh, we are propagating those actors to the multiple legs, so that each order, each box, will get a certain amount of uh, allocated cost. This is one of the main targets by the client, having each order, each box, with a certain amount of allocated cost for each leg of, of transportation. So this is possible since uh, the master order at the beginning is planned through all the different legs. Uh, so that's why we are able to then propagate the actual for all the different legs of transportation, till the hub, of course. From the hub going home, we will see how we are managing it. But till the hub, we are doing actual propagation in, in, uh, in OTM. OK, so we, we, we have talked about cost uh, uh, location. Let's see. Um, how we are managing freight and invoice cost control. Uh, we had two main challenges. Uh, the first one was the consolidation of volume coming from different distribution center to the same 3PL that needs to be consolidated to a certain store. So basically we need to map this reality, uh, this real flow, in OTM. What we have done, basically, we generate 
with batch process during the night, order movements. For those order releases that we have received with Actuax, we generate order movements starting from the 3PL to the store so that we can plan those uh, order movement and build uh, uh, distribution shipment, uh, consolidated distribution shipment. That's what our customer has contracted with the carrier. They want to have consolidated delivery at store, even though the goods are, uh, um, are coming from different DC. So we are planning all the movements, we are building consolidated shipments, and that's basically the, um, the cost we expect to receive from, um, uh, from 3PLs when receiving invoice. And so we are doing, of course, we are receiving invoice from 3PL. We will uh, check whether the consolidation uh, had been taken into account. We are going to check if the cost is correct. And also in case in the international leg of transportation, so before the distribution, if we have multiple brands or even if uh, multiple uh, company in the same truck, uh, we are able to split this, the, um, the invoicing cost uh, for different brands and company in order to communicate the different amounts per brand uh, to the service providers and receive back the invoices the, uh, per legal, legal entity. So one of the objective was to split the cost, split the invoice inside if you have different legal entities into the same truck. And yes. That actually was the second challenge, splitting the cost between different legal entities in the same truck in order to match invoices in the right way. Um, yes, so the financial process, of course, ends with the cost allocation at uh, order level. And then we have a, a report that's going to be used on SAP to uh, allow the final payment. Okay, uh, talking about different legs, uh, the solution we have implemented brings end-to-end -end visibilities to multiple roles. So let's now focus on the customer service role and on the store. Um, basically, we have uh, multiple milestones that needs to be taken into account. We have more than 150 milestones that needs to be monitored somehow, um, especially for international transportation for country like uh, Turkey, uh, where, be where we need to keep track of uh, so many lo locations and activities like uh, custom clearance, uh, bordering, and uh, all, all, all this stuff. So we have uh, developed uh, a flexible approach uh, in order to have the business deciding who and when needs to be notified if a certain milestone is not going to be achieved or is going to be achieved uh, late than expected. Uh, this is for the international lag. What we have uh, for the distribution lag, so for the final distribution lag from the 3PL to the store, uh, we are receiving uh, tracking e events uh, through a connectivity partner that has been selected by the customer that basically allows the customer service to know uh, where each box is, whether the box has been uh, actually uh, received by the, the 3PL or whether if the box uh, is uh, in transit or, uh, or, or delivered. The delivery activity is also tracked at store. They are using their application, um, but the proof of delivery and the receiving activity um, is also integrated with OTM by leveraging uh, REST API functionality. So we are using REST API for multiple purposes. One of these is the receiving the receiving event by the store, but also receiving the tracking event by 3PLs 
and uh, also for claim management functionality. Uh, especially for, uh, for claim management, we have a couple of slides at the hand, so we, we will see um, in a couple of minutes. Okay, we have seen uh, the track and trace, so how this is managed for the international leg of transportation from the DC to the hub, and then from the hub to the store. Um, the track and trace is really important in order to give visibility to stores and customer service. In fact, a uh, store with their mobile app application will get from OTM the minimum ETA, that's basically the planned time we have defined when planning the order movements. So you can see in this uh, e example, it is a shipment from a DC to a certain store into three different legs. We have the first leg managed by a certain carrier, the second leg, for example, can be an ocean one, okay? And the third leg is the final distribution leg to the store. So we have three shipments in OTM. Once we plan the order for all the three different legs and we integrate actuals, we, we are able to say right away to the store when the order is supposed to be received. But if something happened, either in the first leg of transportation or even in the last leg, we are able to update the estimated time of uh, uh, arrival and uh, also to notice the, the store about goods um, arriving later than expected. Uh, you can imagine the customer service before having OTM was receiving tons of calls per, per day. Um, nowadays, basically, it's all integrated. And you can see also that once ship units, so boxes, are uh, received at store, we also update OTM. So this is also important for finance, of course, and for claims management. So uh, of course, um, the fact that we are able to plan till the store, it's important also to check uh, KPIs with carriers. So we have contractually agreed with carrier a certain um, level of service, and we ensure that we are able to track whether that level of, of service uh, has been re respected or not. Yes, the process ends with the um, claims management. Claims are raised by, uh, by stores managing, again, REST API uh, functionality with their mobile app. Um, so once claims are received in the system, it's all about uh, workflow between different roles being involved. Uh, first of all, we have the customer service. Uh, they are going to review the claim inf information of course, we have different categories. In this case, we can see that we are managing different claims, different categories, such as damaged box, missing box, missing items, okay, for the same final distribution shipment to the store. And basically, they will, uh, uh, they, they have the possibility uh, to share this claim with 3PS uh, in order to agree how to, to, go, to go ahead, how to align on these uh, issues. Uh, this is uh, important, as, as especially in case of missing box, uh, since they have the possibility to ask directly to the 3PS uh, where basically the box is, since uh, uh, the store uh, has not received the box, and they can update directly in OTM 
the expected time of uh, ar ar arrival, either from integration, if they are integrated, or directly from UI. So the objective was basically uh, zero calls by the store. Uh, everything should be managed within OTM. Um, at the store, they also have the possibility uh, to add uh, to add pictures, um, and these pictures are also being integrated with OTM, so that either the customer service, but also the carrier, uh, would be able to see such picture and decide how to proceed with the claim. Okay, uh, this is uh, an, an example of, again, claims, claims management. Um, and also, we are showing here the possibility uh, to send the claim to the service provider. In this case, it's the uh, distribution service pro uh, provider. So the DSP basically would, would be able to check the, the claim uh, understand whether it's a uh, damaged box, missing box, or whatever, and give his, his feedback. This is also including uh, um, POD management. So in case the POD has been uh, uh, signed by the, by the store without any reserve or, or, or something, uh, they decide whether to accept or decline the claim. Yes, this is the end of the presentation. Thank you. Of course, open to questions.